Welcome. So now we're on a new topic, but we're using some familiar functions, and that's exponential and log equations. And we're going to be solving exponential and logarithmic equations. Right? And so these are some of the topics that we are going to be learning. Um, I added a couple to the top there because I noticed they weren't on my list here. Uh, where we're starting with is exponential equations with like bases. Right? And so we're going to learn how to solve and what the steps are for solving exponential equations if um, both, ha both uh, terms have the same base. Both sides have uh, a term with an exponent and has the same base. Then we'll learn what to do if the exponential equations have different bases. The two sides do not have the same base. And it, we will solve those problems differently than we solved exponential equations with like bases. The next thing we'll look at, is so that you have um, some context with real world problems, we're going to be evaluating real world exponential. So notice they say evaluating, not solving, right? because um, our variable will be isolated. We're just plugging in right, for x and, and simplifying. Right? So it's not really a solving, it's an evaluating. Right? So, but that way we'll have a little bit of context as to um, working with exponential equations. And then we'll be solving exponential equations, which means we'll be isolating a variable. Right? So if we're just evaluating, the variables are already isolated, like y. It's already isolated. After we learn how to solve real-world exponential, um, and maybe we'll also solve some log equations, um, because there are some really important log equations. I don't think we'll solve them at the same time as the real world. In fact, I know we won't solve them at the same time as the real world exponential. But maybe when we finish up the next top series of topics that you see here, then maybe we'll solve some real world log equations. Right? Actually, we'll move from solving real world exponential to solving log equations. Right? And um, so first, in, in terms of solving log equations, we're going to have a log expression equals a log expression. Right? And how we solve those will be different than how we solve a log equals a number. And that will be different from how we solve a log plus a log equals a number, or log, uh, excuse me, log plus log equals a log. So we have three logs there, and they're combined with and two of them are combined with addition, or even subtraction. And then uh, how we solve log plus log equals number. All right? So a uh, bunch of different um, skills there. Along with those skills, we have two. Uh, we have a couple other related skills, and all of those related skills will have to do with some properties of logs. All right? So all throughout the lesson. Properties of logs will be interspersed. Okay, so they don't have a specific location. We'll learn them as we need them. All right? So now that I've kind of told you what we're going to learn for three minutes, let's actually learn. And we're going to start with exponential equations with like bases. All right, so this is in your notes. Suppose b is a positive number other than 1, and it'll always be a positive number, and it will never be 1. If you have b to the x equals b to the y, in other words, you have a base and it's raised to some power in involving an, a variable, and you have another base raised to some power um, involving a variable, um, or perhaps only one side involves a variable, if we have a base to some power equals a base to some power, the only way that could be true is if the exponents are equal. Right? That is, if x is equal to y. Basically, this states that if the bases are the same, we can simply set the exponents equal. Because the only way that something raised to a power would be equal to the same thing raised to a power is if the two powers were equal to one another. And we could set the exponents equal. So actually, these are actually pretty easy to solve. Um, a little caveat, sometimes we need to simplify, simplify first. And that's where um, it can get just a little bit tricky. But if you follow um, my handy dandy tips, then you should be OK. So let's get started with solving some exponential equations with like bases. So here's the first one. Right? You might get an equation like this. And this is about as easy as it gets, where you don't have to do anything um, to simplify your bases. They're Simplify either side. It's all done for you. 
All right, so here we have 3 to the 2x minus 5 equals 3 to the x plus 3. The only way that 3 to the 2x minus 5 equals 3 to the x plus 3 is if 2x minus 5 equals x plus 3. All right, so now we're just solving an exponential equation. All right, so you subtract x from both sides, you got x minus 5 equals 3, add 5 to both sides, and x equals 8. And you can check your work. You are not required to check your work. Uh, it's not like the, um, when we were solving um, radical equations and you had to check your work because sometimes you got an extraneous solution. You will never have an extraneous solution for an exponential equation. If you don't get a solution, then you made a mistake. All right? There is no no solutions. Every single one of these has a solution. Sometimes the number maybe isn't as pretty as, as could be, but there's always a solution. All right, so this would be 16 minus 5, all right, so that's going to be 3 to the 11, and that does equal 3 to the 11. Now, I don't know what 3 to the 11 equals. I can get a calculator out and calculate it out, but I do know that 3 to the 11 certainly equals 3 to the 11th, all right? So the check is completely optional, all right? Um, and you don't even have this one in your notes, but it would, what I would like you to add to your notes is that there are no, add this, so add this to your notes somewhere, there are no extraneous solutions. For exponential equations, and write that in because we will see some types of equations that have extraneous. We've already seen radical. Um, for exponential equations. There is always a solution. And I will reference this in your notes with you if you tell me any single exponential you solve doesn't have a solution. Right. Now the check is optional. A good idea if this is a test or a final exam or a benchmark or something with a little more, more stakes to it. If it's on your homework and you make a mistake, you know, you can fix it. I'll talk, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll conference with you. Um, so you don't have to check your homework um, because there's no extraneous solutions. All right, so unless you make a mistake, that's the answer. All right. So now that you've written that in your notes, let's continue on. All right, so this one's in your notes. And this is another nice easy one because bases are the same. So since the bases are the same, we simply set the exponents equal. And this is our last easy one. All right, so 3x minus 1 equals 1 third x plus 5. Um, you have a little bit of space in there. You can write um, set exponents equal. But let's spell exponents right. I don't know where that t came from. And next to it, put bases are the same. That's why we set them equal to one another. And now here's a little hint. If you have a fraction, you can multiply, because I know you hate solid working with fractions, you can multiply by the least common denominator, uh, excuse me, the greatest common denominator, and eliminate your fractions. Right? So the greatest common denominator is the uh, product of all the unique factors of all your denominators. Well, you've got one. All right, so the greatest common denominator is 3, right? There's, there's a third, and there's no other fractions here. So if you multiply everything by 3, and that is everything by 3, um, you will not have to have, you won't have any fractions anymore, right? So just a little hint there, and that's what I always do, um, because I don't necessarily always want to deal with fractions. I have no, no problem with fractions. But heck, if I could just multiply everything by 3, why wouldn't I do that? Rather than later on, I'm going to have a fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Instead, it's pretty easy to multiply by 3. All right, so 3 times 3x, that's 9x. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 times a third is just, uh, 3 times 1 third x is just x. And then 3 times 5 is 15. All right, so now you just subtract x from both sides. 8x minus 3 equals 15. Add 3 to both sides. So we have 8x equals 18. Divide both sides by 8. Keep your answer as a reduced fraction. All right? Don't, don't even put it as a decimal. Um, 
there'll be times where we'll have a decimal equivalent. Solving exponentials with like bases is not one of them. All right, so uh, both of those are divisible by 2. So 9 fourths is your solution. And let the, what the heck, let's check this one out because you had, well, it's in your notes. All right, so and here I'll just put solve for x. There, you can write that in your notes. All right, so let's just do the check to check this one out. All right, so we've got 2 times 3 times 9 fourths minus 1 equals 2 um, times 1 third times 9 fourths plus 5. And I truthfully don't remember what the answer is. So hopefully I didn't make no boo-boos. Um, I'll just look real quickly. 9x minus 3. Nope, I distributed it to everybody. Yep. And added three. I added 3. Yep. Yeah, I don't see anything. So if it's there, I don't know what it is. All right, so now let's simplify this. So 2 times, so, so 3 times 9 fourths, right, that would just be 27 fourths. All right, and negative 1 is 4 fourths equals 2 times, so we got 27 twelfths, excuse me, 9 twelfths, 1 times 9, 9 twelfths, looking a little too quickly there. And then plus 5. And 5 is 60 twelfths. All right, so now let's simplify this. All right, so 27 minus 4. All right, so that's going to be 23. 23 fourths. All right, if I get 23 fourths, I know I didn't make a mistake. All right, so that would be, so 9 plus 60 is 69 twelfths. That's not reduced because both of those are divisible by 3. So 2 to the 23 fourths equals 2 to the, so I can divide 69 by 3, and that would be 23. And if we divide 12 by 3, that's 4. Well, now I'm feeling pretty good, all right? Because we got 2 to the 23 fourths equals 2 to the 23 fourths, so that checks out, right? Now, your exponent can be anything. It could be a fraction. It could be positive. It could be negative. Right? It could be anything. Right? It could even be irrational. Um, and, but in, when we're solving these ones, we're going to get rational solutions. All right? So 9 fourths checks out. We get the same thing. And this is going to be probably the last one I check out on these ones all right? because it's, it's an optional step. But uh, I thought we would do that for this one. All right, now let's continue on. Now we're going to have to do a little simplifying in some of these next ones because, look, we have bases that don't match. All right, so the next problem is what to do when the bases are not the same. Because truthfully, I'm not going to give you very many where the bases are exactly the same. But you can rewrite them, all right, so um, that they are the same. Now, in your notes, I want you to add what I put in blue there, this part. All right, very important. I want you to write that in your notes because one of you, or maybe more of you, is going to do this. You cannot change the value in any way. We can change its form. So when you rewrite them and you look back and say, hey, this doesn't equal the original base, then stop. You've made a mistake and rewrite it correctly, all right? Someone is going to do it, I guarantee you, because it's happened every year. All right, so what are we going to do here? We got 9 and we got 27. Could we rewrite those? Now, you can only rewrite by, rewrite, by changing it in, in, in different exponential forms. You cannot multiply. You cannot divide. Right? You cannot you know, take something away. This is something it's raised to a power. All you can do is change its form. You cannot in any way change the value. Right? So I can't say, oh, I'll divide both sides by 9 or something else. No. Right? That's a, that exponent is attached to the base, and division is not the, the inverse of raising to a power. Right. But is, can I rewrite 9 as something else? Well, and when you rewrite it, it's got to be to, something to a power. Well, the only thing 9 is is 3 squared. Right. I mean, some numbers, like for instance 16, 
I could write as 4 squared. I could write as 2 to the 4th. 9 is just 3 squared. Right? That's the only other way I can write 9. Right? It's, it has two factors that are the same, 3 and 3. All right, so about 27. Well, 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. Right? So 27 is 3 times 9. If 9 is 3 squared, 27 is 3 times 3 squared, or 3 cubed. Well, look at that. Now they match. So on this part of the lesson, you're going to be rewriting them so that they match. But very important, you cannot change the value in any way. All right? Because some of you are going to want to, but you can't. All right, so our strategy is to rewrite the basis so they're both the same. Here for the example, we know that 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27. This one, by the way, is not in your notes. All right, so I can rewrite 9, times, uh, 9 to the x plus 1 power equals 27 to the x minus 1 power as 3 squared to the x plus 1 power and 3 cubed to the x minus 1 power. This is called the, and so this is power of powers. Put this in your notes somewhere. When you raise power to a power, so when you raise a base with a power to a power, because now our base is 3, and we're raising 3 squared to a new power, to the x plus 1 power. You multiply exponents. I don't care where you write this, but write this in somewhere. Right? You multiply the exponents. So we're going to drop the bases, because now they match, and we have 2 times x plus 1 equals 3 times x minus 1. And so now we distribute. We have uh, 2x plus 2 equals 3x minus 3. Subtract 2x from both sides. Add 3 to both sides. And one last time, but you don't have to write this in your notes, just the red part there. Um, checking it out and showing you it's the same. Here I did expand, right, because I've got 9 to the 6th and 27 to the 4th. Right? They don't look the same, right? but they have the same value. Right? So 9 to the 6 is 531,441, and so is 27 to the 4th. Right? So we're going to be rewriting these ones so that we can solve. And so here we have, these are all in your notes. All right, so, and we, may, and we may add one more than the one that's, because you have four examples now coming up. We're probably going to add one more. Probably going to add a fifth one in there. But we, you have space. All right, so we have 36 to the x minus 9 power or 6 to the 4x power. All right? It's easier, I think, and I think you'll agree, to write the larger base in terms of the smaller base. All right, so add that to your notes. What you cannot do is say, hey, 36, that's 6 squared. And why can't you say that? Because 36 does not equal 6. You've changed its value. Right? So I have two choices here. I can write them in terms of 6, or I can write them in terms of 36. Let me show you what 36 looks like. Um, actually, let's, do, go, let's start off with how 6 looks like. Right? Let's rewrite it in terms of 6, because that's the way I think you would choose. But I'll show you at the end there, hey, what if you really wanted to write it in terms of 36? You could. Right? Um, I can, so we're going to rewrite this in terms of 6. So 36. That's equal to 6 squared, right? So if I replace 36 with a 6 squared, I have in no way changed its value because 36 is 6 squared. They are the exact same thing. And so now I don't need to do anything with this one. All right, now my bases match, so we can drop the um, bases. Right? We're not going to write the steps in on each one. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should. Um, and... Um, 
you don't have to write it each time. Um, maybe just write it one time. Um, but I'll, I'll try to write it next to each one of these. All right, so here um, we wrote them as 6 to a power. All right, so now bases match. So this is this was our how we change how we changed one of them so it matched the other, but we in no way changed its value. So now bases match. Drop the exponents. I mean, excuse me. Drop the bases and set ex exponents equal. I'm going to abbreviate exponents. All right, so this would be 2 times x minus 9 equals 4x. We just drop those. And then, so that's your first step. Your second step is to distribute, because you have to multiply those exponents. 2x minus 18 equals 4x. And then solve for x. All right, and so uh, we'll subtract 2x from both sides. So negative 18 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. Negative 9 equals x. And, and your exponent can be negative. There's nothing wrong with that. All right? And we're not going to check these because it's not required. Oh, and I forgot. I was going to tell you how you could rewrite this as um, in, ter in terms of 36. So if for some reason you really like that 36, it's your favorite number, all right? Then th this one's not going to change, all right? But you have to rewrite that so that it equals 6. So 36 to what power equals 6? Well, we know the square root of 36 equals 6. And another way you can write square root is as 1 half. So I could, if I really, really like the 36, um, and by the way, include this in your notes. I think it may help you from um, making a mistake and trying to say that 6 squared, trying to make that a 6 squared when it would change its value. So 36 to the x minus 9, you could technically write this as 36 to the 1 half times 4x. All right, so technically you could do that. And actually on this problem, it's not so bad. Um, it's actually a pretty easy solve. You got x minus 9 e would equal 2x, right? and so then you would su just uh, subtract x from both sides. Hey, x is negative 9. So you can see you get the same answer. I don't even have to solve it out. I think you can see this one. Um, but it's, to me, it seems a little awkward <laughs> to rewrite it this way. Um, and they're not always going to be quite that easy. But this is how it would look like if you, if you really like the 36 as the base. All right, so you can just add that to your notes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to write the steps again because I took up too much space. All right, so I think we'll just have written it once. All right, so I think this will be the steps probably for all of them because there's really not much more to do to these. All right, so let's look at this one. All right, so the easiest thing to do is rewrite, I think, the, the uh, 9 as 3 squared. Right? Then they would match. So we'd have 3 squared to the 2x equals 3 to the x minus 6. And 3 squared is 9. All right? So bases match. You can drop the exponents. Um, I mean, excuse me, I said that twice. You can drop the bases and set the exponents equal. All right? So 2 times 2x equals x minus 6. So this would be 4x equals x minus 6. Subtract x from both sides. You've got 3x equals negative 6. Divide by 3, and x is negative 2. By the way, if you were gung-ho on rewriting this in terms of 3, this would have been, because uh, you want to keep it in, I mean, excuse me, in terms of 9, right? You've got to maintain the same value. So... If you want to be in terms of 9, 9 to what power is 3? Again, it's a square root. So it, you could write it as 3 to the 1 half times x minus 6. Now that one doesn't look so pretty anymore, now does it? Right? So if you want it to be in terms of 9, this would have been your option, because um, 9 to the 1 half equals 3. Right? So you can put that in, just so that you can see that you, uh, what you'd have to do if you really, really want it to be 9. Well, there's no way I can write 8, at least to an integer number, 
So there's no integer here that I can raise 8 to to equal 16, right? And we'd be thinking of a combination of exponents and roots and trying to figure it out, and that would be just silly because we could rewrite 8 as something else. Matter of fact, anytime you have an even number, you can always write it. Uh, I should say every time you have an even number. Anytime you have um, 2, right, um, multiplied by itself, you can always write it as 2 to a power. Right? Um, so here, we've got 8 and 16. There are a lot of, lot of even numbers are 2 to a power, but uh, not every one of them. Matter of fact, not even most of them. Right? Um, but 2 and 4 and 8 and 16 and 32 and 64 and 128, any of those are 2 to a power. So we could rewrite the 8 as 2 cubed, and we could rewrite the 16 as 2 to the 4th, all right, and now we can solve this one because the bases will match. So we have 2 to the 3 times 5x power equals 2 to the 4 times 3x plus 4 power. All right, so you see we're just replacing the 8 and the 16 with 2 to a power. Right? And once our bases are the same, we can drop those bases and set the exponents equal. Don't forget to multiply, however. All right, let's just put that in there. Remember to multiply exponents. We'll put a little, actually, I don't want you to think it's remember to x. <laughs> remember to mult exponents. All right, so now we have 3 times 5x equals 4 times 3x. Oh, oops. What the heck happened there? We just decided to leave the plus 4 off. It didn't take me long to realize there was a problem. There's no numbers. How am I going to solve for x if I don't have anything to set it to? Um, all right, so 3 to the 5x equals 4 times 3x plus 4. Can't leave off part of an exponent. This would be 15x equals, don't forget to distribute here, 12x plus 16. Subtract 12x from both sides. I'll even write that in. We've got 3x equals 16, and divide by 3, x equals 16 thirds. All right, so it can be a fraction. All right, and so now we've solved these ones. We're going to add one little, one little dimension to our solving, and that is what if there's some other stuff with our um, exponential. Right, and this one's not in your notes, but one is coming up. All right, so if you have other stuff with your exponential, isolate it first if it's not already isolated. If what you end up with is something, uh, the same base on both sides, um, or something you could rewrite as the same base on both sides, then you can solve using this technique. All right, so we add 5 to both sides, and I say to myself, hey, 9 is 3 squared. So now I've got 3 to the 2x plus 1 equals 3 squared. Well, now that's a super easy solve. Notice, really the only difficult thing, if you call it difficult, is remembering to rewrite the bases so they match. Because this solving is pretty easy. 2x plus 1 equals 2. Subtract 1 from both sides. Divide by 2. x is a half. That's all there is to it. So the solving on these is not difficult at all. Right? You just, and really, rewriting is not difficult. You just got to remember the steps. So the next one is in your notes. I mean, the, the next, next one is in your notes. And if you want, you can put both in your notes. Um, but definitely, you have to put that second one in your notes. All right, so here, I didn't have to isolate it at all. Um, I probably should throw something with it. You know, I could. Just, that's for fun. Um, delete that and change it up just a little bit just so that we have, oops, what happened? Uh-oh. <laughs> well, as you see, I've lost my cursor. And so I have no idea where I'm hitting. Here we go. Let's just change this real quick. And I'm going to have you put this one in your notes. Just a little bit more practice with isolating because there was only one there. So I'm going to make this one minus 
not going to make it too hard. Two, whoops, and it thinks it's an exponent. There we go. Minus two equals 30. All right, so put that one in your notes on the other side. Now, actually, we can just switch them. So now they're in the same order as in your notes. There we go. All right, so we'll do both of these, and including my rewritten one. I decided to rewrite it, and I decided I'd have you do it in your notes. All right, so the first one here, we need to rewrite this, all right, um, it's by isolating our variable, right? And so to isolate the variable, we just want to isolate the term with the variable. 81 to the 2x, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides, right, because our exponential is not isolated. So we have 81 to the 2x equals 3. All right, so now technically you have two ways to write this. Let's do the easier way, which is to rewrite the 81 in terms of 3. All right, so now if you remember your powers of 3, all right, so 3 to the first is 3, and 3 squared is 9, and 3 cubed is 27, and 3 to the fourth is 81. If you multiply 27 times 3, you get 81. And if you think about it, 3 squared is 9, and three, if you had another 3 squared, you'd have 3 to the 4th, and 9 times 9 is 81. So we're going to rewrite the 81 as 3 to the 4th, right? because it has the same meaning. And then, since it already has an exponent, we have to multiply exponents. When we raise power to power, we multiply exponents. All right, so now you need to represent this as 3 to a power. I need to have something here, otherwise I don't have anything to set it equal to. Well, 3 to what power is 3? Well, 3 to the first power is 3. Alright, so if, if um, you don't have an exponent there, and uh, that, or any kind of exponent, I'll just write it as to the first power. Alright, that's technically an exponent, and now you can solve it. So we have 4 times 2x equals 1. So 8x equals 1. This is an easy solve. x is 1 eighth. By the way, if you are gung-ho on making it in terms of 81, all right, so if you, you add this to your notes, if you want, and actually add everything you see here in red, if you want the base to be 81, then here's our equation. So it would be 81 to the 2x is equal to, right, so 81 to what power equals 3? Well, I'd have to go in reverse and take the fourth root, right? So 81, this would be 81 on this side here to represent the 3. It would be 81 to the 1 fourth power. I don't think I like is that one as much. 2x is equal to 1 fourth. I think I like the other one, right? Um, but you'd get the same answer, right? Because if you divide by 2, it's the same as multiplying by a half. You'd still get x is 1 eighth, right? But I think I like the other way better, right? So I always take the larger number and rewrite it in terms of the smaller number. Sometimes I have to rewrite both of them. Um, but if you're gung-ho on making it 81, well, you could make it 81 to the 2x equals 81 to the 1 fourth. I'm not suggesting that, but you could. All right, so now we're going to solve, and this is the last one in this part of the lesson, we're going to add 2 to both sides. We've got 2 to the 3x minus 9 equals 32. All right, so we gave ourselves something to isolate. All right, so I think it would be much easier to rewrite 32 in terms of 2. All right, because if you remember, 2 to the first is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 cubed is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16, keep multiplying by 2, and 2 to the 5th is 32. So we could rewrite this as 2 to the 3x minus 9 equals 2 to the 5th. Now that the bases match, you can drop them and set the exponents equal. So we have 3x minus 9 equals 5, add 9 to both sides, 3x is equal to 14, and then divide both sides by 3 x is 14 thirds. Alright, and also if you want the base to be uh, 
32, all right, well then, two to what uh, 32 to what power equals 2, that would be 32 to the 1 fifth, oops, there we go, 1 fifth power e that equals 2. The fifth root of 32 equals 2. So if you really wanted to, you could make this 32 to the 1 fifth times 3x minus 9 um, equals 32 to the first, but I have no idea why you'd want to do that, all right? So I think it's much easier that this is easier than this. But I do see students try to do that. All right. So I think this is the end of my podcast. Right. In the next lesson, you're going to learn something that you're going to need to solve exponential equations when you can't rewrite them so they have the same base. All right. So, end of my podcast. Bye for now.